Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible, and we would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we are going to investigate short futures trading, continuing our discussion from last video. And the short futures trading we are going to investigate based on the case study of wheat futures trading, and we will be walking in the shoes of an agricultural company that grows wheat and sells it on international or local markets. And obviously, as the price of wheat can be volatile, the company is quite heavily exposed to the changing price of wheat. It contributing to its revenue, it's the main component of it, and uh, it's unsurprising that uh, an agricultural company might want to eliminate or at least reduce its exposure to wheat prices by using futures trading. So here we have got a contract on wheat uh, starting 30th of September 2020 with maturity 14th of December 2020. So here we have got a futures contract maturing at the middle of the month. And again, there are conventions in futures trading that uh, standardize the terms of the contracts so that there is enough flexibility for hedging your exposure to wheat prices in particular for different months, different parts of the season, but so that the market is not too fragmented. Here it was opted to specify maturity dates as roughly middles of every single month. So here we've got 14th of December 2020. So perhaps this is when um, some particular company will harvest the wheat and prepare it for shipping, and uh, that's how they would catch their financial risk, their business risk, in terms of wheat price exposures. Again, uh, futures contracts are not typically used to manage supply chains, so the company would just supply their wheat to their regular customers, and uh, they would just um, cancel the futures contract exposure at the very end and uh, reap the financial impact of that, so the reduction of risk. But some futures contracts, nevertheless, um, around 5%, but still, are held until physical delivery. But it's mostly a feature of forwards contracts that are negotiated over the counter and can be used to manage both the business risk and the supply chain by pre-agreeing the terms of delivery with your counterparty. But here, wheat futures are traded within the exchanges, heavily standardized, and are primarily used to manage the exposure to commodity prices. And here, what we need to consider is that the futures price of wheat in units per contract, it's quite heavily different to the spot price of wheat in dollars per bushel. Bushel being a unit of mass that is evolved from an old-fashioned measure of volume. Again, you would have a lot of these specific and uh, tracing back to imperial times, I guess, measures of uh, volume or uh, weight, tracing back from the old times when these conventions about commodity trading were made. Here we can see that this difference is actually orders of magnitude, so something is surely wrong here. This cannot be dollars per bushel, and indeed it isn't, because as futures are priced in units per contract and not in dollars per some unit of uh, weight or mass, we can see here that the size of one contract of wheat futures trading is 5,000 bushels, and the value of the contract is $50 per unit or per point. So to convert this from units per contract into dollars per bushel to make it comparable to the spot price, we can just multiply it by a value per point and divide it onto the contract size in bushels per contract. And this gives us a comparable value to the spot price. But still, we see on the graph 
that the spot price and the futures price are quite heavily divergent at the very start, and then the gap narrows down and disappears at the end of the trading period. Again, this is due to the fact that futures contracts are more and more conceptually similar to spot contracts as maturity dates approach. And also, financially, this is due to time value of money considerations and holding costs. And if you compare this case to the one we saw with oil, we can see that the difference between futures price and spot price is much more heavily pronounced in case of wheat. And that's simply because wheat is less dense of a commodity, less value of wheat can be packed into a unit of storage space rather than oil. That's why storage costs play a greater role in uh, determining what this gap is. But again, this is something that is uh, really important for arbitraging and uh, valuing futures and forwards contracts, and that's something that we'll investigate in future videos to come. As for now, we need to specify what our short futures contract is. Short futures contract meaning that we agree to sell wheat at the future at a predetermined price, this price being 5.78 cents per bushel or 578 units per contract. The position that we want to uh, enter, the short position in wheat, will be 70,000 bushels. That's how much we will harvest and that's how much we need to uh, hedge our exposure to. So it means that the number of contracts that we need to short, that we need to sell on the exchange is 70,000 over 5,000, that being the size of the contract, meaning that we're shorting 14 standardized contracts in terms of wheat futures deliverable 14th of December 2020. And the contract value can be calculated in two different ways, either multiplying the position in bushels onto dollars per bushel, giving us slightly more than $400,000, or multiplying the position in terms of contracts by units per contract by value per unit or per point of the contract. Both are equivalent, meaning that no mistakes were made here. Then we need to consider our margin requirements, here the initial margin being $60,000 and the margin call threshold being $40,000. So to calculate the initial margin in percentage, as is conventional in most commodity trading cases, we can just divide our initial margin in dollars onto our contract value in dollars and get roughly 15%, 14.83, which is quite typical for commodities trading. Now we can calculate our daily and cumulative payoffs per bushel and in total. Incremental daily payoffs would reflect whether we are winning or losing in terms of foregone uh, upside or in terms of saved cost when we negotiate our futures contract and compare it to the predominant price or at the futures market at a particular point in time. For a shorting counterparty, we are actually thrilled to see the price plummeting, given the fact that we have already agreed on a price of $5.78 per bushel, and if it's lower, it means that we are winning relative to what would have been if we just waited and uh, decided to sell wheat at the spot at the 14th of December 2020. Reflecting that, we need to subtract the price today from the price yesterday to get our incremental daily profit and loss or payoff per bushel. Here we can see that as the price reduced, we are winning 8 cents per bushel because we are actually receiving more for our wheat than we would have received if we waited until the 1st of October. And this logic translates into every single day as we bottom like this formula all the way down. For example, here we lost 3 cents per bushel at this day compared to last day as the price increased. So if we negotiated the contract here, would have actually been better off and so on and so forth. And in total, we can just multiply our payoff per bushel onto the total position in bushels and get the total dollar value. And for the cumulative uh, profit and loss for comparisons between the current day and the start day, 
after all that's the day we fixed our wheat price for the future we can just subtract from the very start date over here and we need to lock that the price that's prevalent at a particular day so here we can see that at the first day it's exactly the same as the second day it reflects a five cent per bushel decrease at the 2nd of October compared to 30th of September and at the very end we can see that we end up losing 15 cents per bushel given that this price is actually higher than the price we have negotiated and it means that uh, we end up forgoing some upside because if we waited until mid-December and sold our wheat on the spot we would have gotten a higher dollar amount for our 70,000 bushels. But, again, no one should cry over spilled milk, as this is a contract that we've already negotiated and have to honor. And uh, one reason why we should honor this contract from a selfish point of view is that the marginal requirements incentivize us to do so. Here we can calculate our total cumulative uh, payoff per bushel throughout the whole period to verify that we actually ended up losing money and how much did we do so in terms of the total position simply multiplying it quickly by the number of bushels and uh, this over and done with we can see that we lose almost eleven thousand dollars not something that you would voluntarily agree for and uh, now we can proceed towards the calculation of our margin requirements and uh, marking to market of our current account. So we start at zero in our current account, as at the start we have nothing deposited within the exchange, isn't it? But at the very start, to enter into the futures uh, trading contract, the exchange requires us to deposit the initial margin. And it means that we have to deposit $60,000 dollars within the exchange to be permitted to proceed with the futures trading and the current account value after margin payments is simply the sum of the two quite obviously for the first day then the exchange starts marking our current account to market reflecting both the amount of payments we have deposited and the incremental profit and loss we have made on the whole contract at a particular day so here we add onto the uh, current account value in the previous day, the total profit and loss uh, we have made incrementally at this day. And this marks our current account to market upwards as we have gained at this particular day compared to last day, bringing the value above 65,000. So all goes well so far. But the exchange always keeps an eye on strategic default opportunities, meaning that they compare our mark to market value of the current account to the margin call threshold and if it's indeed lower they immediately prompt us to top up our margin account so that the uh, current account value marked to market is back at the value of the initial margin so if it's that the case we need to deposit additional amount that's equal to the difference between the initial margin and the mark to market value and if it's not the case the exchange lets us roam free and uh, the margin payments at that particular day would be zero and then we adopt these two again to arrive at the final value and we can enforce this formula throughout to see if there has been any notable margin payments and uh, we don't need to wait long until the first 7th of october 2020 the wheat price increased to six dollars eight cents per bushel and that has been a significant enough increase so that the exchange would be worried that we would actually discard our futures contract our short futures contract and just sell it on the spot or negotiate uh, another futures contract somewhere else so to keep us in line with the contractual obligation we agreed upon they requested us to deposit additional uh $20,650 within our margin account to bring it back to $60,000, which is the value of the initial margin. And if we go and see further down below, 
we can see that that was the only margin payment, fortunately, that we had to forgo for our contract to be maintained. But still, we can refer to the number of margin calls that happened throughout the period, just counting if these entries are positive, apart from this very first margin payment that would have happened regardless. We can see that only one margin call occurred. Then we can sum up all the margin payments, including the initial margin, bringing that to over $80,000, and then referring to the final value of our current account. And here we see that our value of the current account at the very end is smaller than the amount that we've deposited, meaning that the contract payoff would be the difference between the current account and the margin payments is negative at, and sits at minus $10,150, exactly the, the value we received from past calculations, meaning that all of our calculations have been prudent and correct. And here we can further emphasize the findings we stumbled upon last video in terms of the long futures trading with Brent. The exchanges do enable safe and uh, liquid futures trading across counterparties and they protect both sides from strategic defaults by implementing the margin requirements, which is a very good financial innovation, all things considered. However, it can trigger significant liquidity risk concerns when a lot of counterparties experience margin calls at the same point in time. And uh, this issue is not only prevalent in futures trading, this can uh, be observed in all other derivative trading, and also it is very prominent in uh, short selling of stocks, and how margin calls and uh, margin requirements have enabled some people to profit of excessive short positions in particular stocks. Well, I've got a video on that as well, so please do uh, watch it if you're interested. As for now, it's all there is for short futures trading and margin requirements. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business economics or finance topics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.